So I think we will start with the issues touching on the ministry. Auditor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the issues to do with uh, the CSC Ministry of Education, we are uh, talking about the Auditor General's report for the year 2018-2019, in which we have an issue to do with non compliance with IPSAS 35. And I find this uh, letter I can go through the paragraph. The report indicates that the statement of financial performance reflects performance of the university and that of Rivertex East Africa Limited, a subsidiary of the university on the face, and therefore the presentation is not in line with any known financial reporting framework. Further, the investment that the university has made in Rivertex East Africa Limited has not been recognized in the university's accounting records and therefore consolidation of the two entities cannot be properly achieved with the creation of an unidentified suspense account. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Bwana uh, Waziri. Oh, auditor, break it down. What Thank is the you. Issue? I, I think the issues is raised are a bit wide. Uh, some I need, I need to split out and I've done a response uh, where we've dealt with the issues that we thought are directly uh, linked to us. Uh, and then the teams are here from uh, all the universities and they'll be able to speak to the various uh, specific aspects that uh, directly concern them. But I can give a response on the general position on the questions that were presented to us. The member has a response. It's a, a four-page response with the attachments uh, from CS1 to CS7. Yes, proceed, uh, Waziri. Yes, so with your kind permission, and I want to thank the committee for inviting us to come to respond to the issues that are before us. Uh, the question that um, was presented to us was related to the details of a loan facility advanced to Moy University as an investment in River Texas East Africa Limited. Um, Without going into too many details, Rivertex uh, East Africa, Moy University incorporated a company called Rivertex East Africa Limited on the 16th of August 2007. The company is registered under the Companies Act, and the shareholders are Moy University, which owns 49,999 shares, and the office of the vice, chair, of vice chancellor of Moy that owns one share. The university acquired the assets of the former Rivertex East Africa Limited through mobilizing um, a, a funds amounting to 200 million from internal sources and a loan of 50 million from its pension fund. And since uh, that particular uh, takeover, the university has spent about 479 million 833. Uh, 1,331 to acquire and revive the company over the years. The objective of the facility was to offer training, research, and extension and commercial uh, purposes. The facility in question arose out of an agreement dated 11th of July, that is a loan that was between the Exim Bank of India and uh, the government of Kenya, and we've attached uh, a copy of the loan as CX1. Uh, from it, we note that uh, the loan was for uh, USD 29,950,000, 29, and it was for purposes of upgrading Rivertex East Africa Limited by financing the purchase of eligible goods and services. Um, the report of these goods and services 
of the Inspection and Acceptance Committee is attached as CS2, indicating what heavy items or equipment that were presented. So as a ministry and uh, Mo University, uh, we're not party to the execution of that agreement because it was a government between government of Kenya and uh, the Exim Bank of India. And, and I think Treasury would be able to give more information on that facility. The second issue related to details of unserviced, understated long-term loan from the government of Kenya between Moi University and Karatina. I think that is part of... Uh, uh, Honorable uh, members, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you want us to exhaust that bit first before we go to the next. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so, CS, you said that Moi University incorporated Rivertex East Africa Limited. Yes. But he, somewhere else you said Mo University acquired assets of former Rivertex East Africa Limited. Yes, they were acquired through this particular company that was formed. The company that belongs to Moe University. So they formed East Africa, Rivertex East, East Africa, Africa Limited. Limited. And the other one was Rivertex River East, East Africa, Africa Limited. Yes. By mobilizing. But it's the same thing. Yeah. No, the other one is Rivertex. It was called Rivertex. I'm reading what, you've, uh, yeah. what your response is. And if they were taking it up, yeah. why register another one? I don't know the, the reason, but sometimes I understand when uh, institutions want to do commercial activities that are not uh, in line with the actual mandate of the organization, they do uh, what they call the uh, special purpose vehicles to use in that activity. That's perhaps the reason why it was formed, but they are all here. They can answer to that question. Maybe VC, you can, you can answer. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, we have our former VC here who was uh, uh, involved in that. He could uh, share some more with your okay. permission. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think your question was why. Chairman, so that you can. The, uh, biability study, which was done to give you inventors or the authority to see that. Uh, the company you are taking over is going to be beneficial to the public and it will not be at a waste of taxpayers' money. And, uh, if you have found that it's going to be profitable, because as far as we are concerned, the only query you are <coughs> reason of why you, you acquired this a company, at the end of the day, this institution which converted to a company, and to us, the way things look like is it was a million of about to spoon public money for a purpose which was known to you alone as a, a CEO at that time, the accounting officer. So when you're answering, bear that in mind that uh, you are the one who was accountable. And anything which is found to be a loss to the public money, you are the person involved about to refund the same personally. So don't take it just for granted that you have come just to give us a statement and run away. Yes, Honorable Mina. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm trying to understand a few things here. And I've got questions yes, to... Yes, yes, a minute. Uh, former VC, just note down. I realize you're not writing so that you respond to every question. Um, I, I want to ask a few questions to help me understand. Uh, in this response, we are told that the university uh, showed interest to acquire these river checks. And uh, in that regard, they were able to establish a company to do so. And they even shared out the, the shares. But... Uh, Within the same response, we are told that uh, they are not part of the negotiation or execution of the agreement. How can we connect the two? That's my 
first question. The second one, I want to understand how the shares were distributed. We are told uh, one, I'm trying to locate where the, yeah. But a share went to VC. So there's university, there's VC. I also need to understand that. Thank you. Yes, Bwana VC, starting with oh. the... Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, you asked about uh, why, whether we did. Madam, who are you? Son. Sorry, just yes, a minute. Who are you? Okay. Proceed. I think, first of all, uh, the reason why there is a difference in the names, uh, River Text East Africa Limited, is because now, when we were actually purchasing it, we knew it wasn't a receivership. And when people realized that uh, it was going to be bought by more university, the ones who were not actually being paid were waiting for us to take. So we, what we did was we formed, we came up with the, the name, Ribatex East Africa Limited to separate ourselves from the ones we used to have it. Uh, so that's why we are that team. Uh, now, for a second thing, about uh, the, whether, whether we, we did diligence. What we did here was that we, we actually did what we call a feasibility study. And when we had a business plan, to make sure that what we were getting was not going to be a problem to the university and also the public. And uh, after doing so, uh, we knew it was going to be mainly for training purposes, research, extension purposes. So, uh, and also, the money that we used were internally generated. There were money within the university, so we did not take any money from outside. Uh, now, the issue about um, the shares now, that's a legal issue, uh, because uh, we were advised by the legal department that it has got to be a 1% share to somebody. So the vice chancellor then, which uh, had 1% share, knowing that when he leaves office, Whoever comes will also have another one percent share. Uh, that's the arrangement that we had at that time, and uh, we didn't see any problem then. So I think, uh, Chair, who advised you about the one share? The legal department within the university. What was the rationale? Uh, well. Like I said, what it was an advice to us, the rationale was now based on the practice. I, I think, Chair, under the former companies act, if you are a former company, you had to have at least two shareholders. Mm -hmm. And so Moi University as an institution had the higher number, and then the office of the vice chair, uh, vice chancellor had one share in order for them to meet that legal requirement. That's okay. the rationale. Did you seek approval from the, the your parent ministry? Yes, Chair. Well, after we wrote, the, we had done the business plan. We went through all procedures that are required to cancel up to the Ministry of Higher Education at that time. You can share with us from the feasibility report to the business plan. All those things were submitted to you the can show us. I don't have the documents. So I've been away for 17 years now. The current VC, do you have that documentation? We provide, Sorry? We but VC, we have an audit issue. We are discussing river tax. You know we've been on this issue so many times. How do you come in a meeting and say you're going to provide? Honorable uh, Chair, the feasibility study we were not able to get the document. Where is the document? 
in our records, uh, when we have, we are not able to get uh, the, the records. Well, oh, sorry? We are not able to get the records. Where are the records? <coughs> Yeah, how, how, how do we ascertain that you had them? Honorable Chair, uh, again, what we have is uh, a document for incorporation. Yes, continue. We have the gentlemen, as the answer, may, may, let's so that you can answer them together, for it involves the same issue. I'm still back to uh, Professor Mibei, Malik, so that I can have the current uh, VC answering the same. When you carried that uh, feasibility study, which you have just told us about, the projections and the resultant of the feasibility study, after you did so, how long did you stay in the university to implement the same and see that you have realized all the projections? Because as we study now, this river tax has been causing losses to the university and it has been operating through losses. It has never had any profit or anything profitable to the institution or even to the public. <coughs> and the most that when we talk of there is no taxpayer's money which was used, but internally a produced generated money from university. Are you separating this university from the public? To so say that the money to produce is it is its own, not public money? In despite of if it taxpayers' money, or if it is still the money within the public which it was acquired on behalf of the public. And then, that what the feasibility study which you did. Where is it for us to look at it and see that you are the future and you are the rest of the future? Mm -hmm. Even also, then whoever took that risk shouldn't be accountable. Because you see now what we have here is something which has acquired a loss of about 479 million Kenya shillings. Who is that long? Who, who, carried that, who carried out that long feasibility study? Because he used his knowledge to make the public get into a loss and he must be accountable. Or how did it work? That's what we want to know. Okay, Chair, I think I'll be very clear here. Uh, number one, about uh, taxpayers' money. All monies that are raised, either through parallel program or whatever program, uh, within a university, they are taxpayers' money. Uh, what I meant, Chair, at the time was that uh, it was not a loan. So, uh, if I did not clear that one, I would have wanted to say, I didn't want to say that it was not taxpayers' money. It's really taxpayers' money because at the end of the day, we collect from the public. And uh, so, uh, only that we did not borrow from any bank or anywhere. <laughs> Okay, then the issue of uh, feasibility study, uh, we had a, a team of people, it took a long time for this to be done, and uh, we did, uh, we engaged some experts, so some even from, uh, from uh, RiverTex itself, the ones who had gone, and uh, we had about four, three of months or so of intensive, uh, actually it's a research on that. And after we got the feasibility study, we, we actually prepared a business plan, which was showing you where do we break, break even and all that. So from then, after it was acquired now, it was the management of RiverTex who were on daily basis uh, running the place to ensure that uh, the, what was actually put in the business plan was realized. So I think at some point also, yeah, we need also maybe contribution from the uh, management of river tax because now they are the ones who sat there on daily basis to make sure that uh, uh, this was done. So, uh, Professor, uh, yeah. where are the documents? In fact, the auditor I says the, the, the documents were not consolidated. Uh, yes, chairman, yes. 
actually I was getting to that because even looking at the response and what the auditors have raised, the auditors are very clear. They're saying you needed to have combined items like assets, liabilities, net assets, equity revenue, expenses, cash flows of the controlling entity with those of its controlled entities. But here we have a story on how it was acquired, the loan, the how much, while the auditors are asking for this document. Just so that we are clear on what, what we are doing. And to clarify, the same chairman, I have had something new, you know, the more the professor talks, he leaves leave us more confused than the way we started. Because he's telling us that after they bought, and formulated that company which bought, then they left the running of Libertex to the people who were there, running it before, to the people who were running it to, to be insolvent. He actually say, says to the subsidiary of the university. Uh, combine those questions, I want the Honorable Bissau to ask a question and answer them together. Uh, thank you, Chair. For the record, Maurice Kakai Bissau is my name, uh, a member of parliament for Kiminini, constituency Transvaal County. Professor Mibei, you talked about funds having come from your internal kitty. But in the report I see from the ministry, there is 29, call it $30 million. Was that during your time? And secondly, I heard you say that you had experts from Rivertex helping you to go through the process. How would you expect them to give you a fair view of the institution, which was crumbling by then, for you to make a buying decision. And thirdly, what did you buy from Rivertex apart from land? Were their machines operational? And lastly, also to the Minister, Education, the institution, archiving is part of what the course you do give, right? Archiving, filing, archiving, record management, isn't it? Yes, you have a degree in record management. You offer. You offer, right? We offer, yeah. yeah. So you no have students in record management faculty giving that degree, and you yourself cannot even keep a single important document where you invested million. When it comes to entrepreneurship, I think the visibility study was just sort of patched up. If you had a proper visibility study, this was not an investment to, you know, to engage the, the Kenyan taxpayers. And we continue seeing this. I think this is the third or fourth time we are meeting institutions that have got a lot of land. They are even giving things like, you know, um, livestock management. You cannot generate in income. You're talking of entrepreneurship. You cannot, you know, how do we expect to get graduates? who will come here on the market and really excel in this particular um, uh, discipline. If we, you, you professors, because you are among the elite, if we count in terms of the elite, and I think Professor Airo will agree with me, when we are talking about the elite, you will take it later, uh, Waziri. Do why, we, why, why can't we, honorable members, why can't we finish with the, okay. with the prof? I'll back my question, Waziri. Yes, thank you. Yes, Prof. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I think, uh, let me very clear, be clear here, that we did not actually, after we purchased the river text, we did not go back to the ones we used to own it. They would actually, currently, there is an MB river text which took over the place, which actually rent the facility after it was bought. So we didn't go back to the, to the person that used to have it. No, it, that did not happen. Uh, so it was actually, act up to today, it is managed by the people with the registration, Libertex East Africa Limited. Uh, so I should be very clear on that one. Then about um, uh, experts from outside. Uh, the experts we had were people within the university, and there was only one person who actually used, who used to be, 
I still don't understand what professor means by uh, still being run by the people who are there. Can you come out clear? Is it being run by the university as the honorable members as or the people who sold the the shares to you? It's being <coughs> Honorable Chair, with your permission, if we can get the MDEs with us here, of Rivertex, to assist also in getting... Yeah, tell him to come. Tell him to come, but as he comes, uh, Prof, as he comes, look for him, but as he comes, a university has bought Rivertex. It becomes yours. Why do you keep on talking about... Because it is assumed that any employee is your employee as a university. Professor Mipe, is that clear? Yeah. Well, they are not third parties. It is the property of the university. Right? Yes. Yeah, please discuss in that context. Answer, proceed on the other questions. And Chair, even as we bring in the MD, how long has the MD been there? We expect you being the vice chancellor, you're in the driver's seat. The dashboard is in front of you. So most of the issues should pick them up. But again, to the issue of the MD, how long has the MD been there? Uh, and, honorable members, and let's, be, let's be a bit methodological. We have about five questions to, to the professor. Let him answer, then we, we, we ask some more. Yes, Prof. Okay. So the other part which I was to answer was about... Uh, the assets. Now, in Rivertex, there are machines and there is also land. So when we acquired them, all of them were put under Rivertex is Avril Limited. And they belong to East Avril Limited, which is owned by more University. Uh, there was also another question. No, perhaps about, just break it down. What do you mean land? How many acres? Machines? What kind of machines? Uh, Chairman, they, when we took over the old machines, which you would. But, the but Chairman, to assist on that, you know, it's not in telling us because what the auditors raised is that there is not there is no documentation, you know, and what are we also making reference to? Because the auditors have should have looked at them, and that is why it's an audit query that you did right. not combine the. Uh, it's called what? Consolidation documentation. documentation when you acquired the institution. Chair, yeah. I know we did. Because Our otherwise, case. it becomes just storytelling. Yeah. Prof, yeah. you are just giving us stories, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, when you talk of land, we need to see how much land. And what is the documentation? And is it still there? Yeah. When you say machines, what kind of machines? Yes. And, and yeah. cash flows, revenue. Yes. What did you? T I mean, and it has to be in documentation. It has to be documented. Yeah. When you say when you say you mobilize four hundred and seventy nine million from where? Where are the documents? That's what you're talking about. Then, chair, even when you handed over, where did you hand over? What, what documents were handed over to the next person who took over the, the institution? Because, you know, you can't just tell us that the, 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 the institution is there, Drivertex is there, and there are no documentation. So what are we talking about? Chair, 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 I, I, think, I think we, the, the professor, by the way, I'm Kalito Kilitani, the MP, Gambia Central. I've come a bit late, I'm sorry. Uh, what I was saying is that uh, the professor, the good professor, the way and the present one. I think you, you must be having an inventory of all the documents, of all, all the, 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 the items that were there, the land, the acreage number, the, 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 the machines, all of them uh, outlined. A proper inventory of all what you acquired from the, uh, the, 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 the textile industry. Yeah. Honorable Chair, uh, if I may respond to that, we have a file uh, which has the documents for Rivertex uh, at some point. Uh, Prof, that's why I said we you share. understand what you are saying? Yeah, we, we do. Even a copy of the title is here. Sorry? 
even a copy of the title deed is here. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you provide them to the auditors? For verification. Because, when I see us, why we called we, all this meeting is because the university was hiding under the Ministry of Education, it was hiding under the Ministry of Industry, okay? Uh, on small matters such as documentation. So why didn't you provide documentation to the auditor? Because when you say you mobilized 479, from where? Your kitchen. Or from where, professor? We need backed up documentations. This money was from, from part-time students. This was from here. Yeah, this public money and this government. Wonderful chair, thank you so much, uh, members. We have since provided documents to the when since we left here, Honorable uh, Chair. When did you provide documents? The, the, the Professor, when did you provide documents? We've been working since last last week. Uh, Professor, yeah. when did you provide documents? Monday, Tuesday, ten o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock? The auditor can confirm. Uh, on the Prof, yes, sir. When did you provide documents? Part of the documentation we provided yesterday, uh, the other Monday. So we've been compiling documents. Uh, on the chair. No, just a minute, doctor. I mean, uh, auditor. When did you get the documents? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a file which was received this morning, and it has not passed through our office. So we need to, we have been going through it, but we got them today. Is it a complete Actually, Chairman, let me ask this question, and then because honestly we also can't continue yeah. with this meeting until these documents, because I said the response of question number one is not, it's totally different from what the audit has raised. But just so that we are so clear, I wanted to ask the professors whether they know what a consolidated financial statement, what it stipulates, and what the consolidation procedure is. Because maybe we, 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 we are not on the same page and what the auditors also are asking. So whether you understand what it is, and whether that is what you've given to the auditors. So that, Chairman, you should guide the committee whether the auditors then can go look at what has been presented, but is it what the auditors have asked for? With, with your permission, Chairman, so that you can answer this, so that we can answer them together. Can this committee be informed of why? Because it can be seen that it's a deliberate attempt to delay us and prevent us from inquiring and uh, getting the auditors' query being answered from the university, the whole and the new system, whereby they provide the documents today in the morning, yet we are now about two weeks, which this committee gave the limited time of when they were supposed to submit the documents. And the professor, the current professor knew, the VC knew very well that if we provide the documents today, in no way can we proceed, can we go on it. It's just we spend our time, the minister's time, and everybody else's time. Deliberately. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Professor, with your permission. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, is it in order for the Vice Chancellor, who has been in this meeting so many times, to come, and this is a house of records, to even try to mislead the house, literally lying that he had given the documents, but the auditor is saying he received them this morning? Is it really in order? Honorable Mumina? Chair, I think we, we're just wasting our time because. What was asked here from the university is very basic information. When you buy something, you already know what you're buying. So providing documentation shouldn't be a problem. So I don't know why we've wasted all this time to push the same kind of information to the auditor. And we are being told it was delivered this morning. Honorable Malimo, thank you, Chair. Just want to, to know the reasons why the VC has delayed in submitting the documents. Maybe yes, some results. See, yes, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yes, with your permission, I just wanted to clarify that uh, uh, the committee addressed different questions to different 
teams, the response that you have is one from us that we are responding to the issues that we thought um, are directed at us and with the information that we were able to correct. So we might not have captured the exact other questions that were addressed to maybe the universities or to somebody else. So that's why it might look a bit off, but it's addressing a specific question that uh, was addressed to us. We see it's not off. I mean, We've been wanting this documentation yeah. all this time. No, I was meaning the response. My response yeah, to yeah. question one, yes. Yes, it might look yeah. a bit scanty. Yes, yeah. thank you, thank you. Honorable members. <coughs> and uh, Honorable Chair, with the house. permission, uh, if I may also uh, chip in, uh, the letter that we got on 1st of October from uh, the Honorable House was that we provide all documentation relating to a loan facility uh, acquired by to purchase river debt. So that, that could explain why we were getting more extra information at a later time. But largely that is what we, are, we were getting the documentation related to the loan facility. You see, yes, sir. the origin of why we are here is because we have an audit query. That's the background. And what is the audit query about? It's about documentation. You haven't synchronized consolidated your documents for all this time. Okay? Bonavisi and honorable members, so that we we don't do cat and mouse. No, Mr. Chairman, before you pronounce that one, because I can see where you're ending to. Yeah, before you go there. No, no, I just want to give you that one, no. I know where you're ending to, Chairman. Yeah, we know. May I know? <laughs> before, before you do that, let's, may, may I know from the record, Chairman, when we were last week, but one, uh, there was there were some fines, Chairman, if you can get my attention. <coughs> when we when we were here last week, but when there were some fines which we imposed upon the VC because of non compliance as he has done it today. And he was given limited time to pay and he was to pay personally, not through the public money. Has it been complied with? And if not so, then he thinks that it's just a joke, that's why it's just doing repeating the same, same, same mistake today. Chair, before, uh, before you let's your, from the record. your pronouncement, Chair, uh, I would want to know from the uh, VC if now, as we sit here, all the documents have been submitted to the auditor. So that, Chair, I, I think from there, then we can, we can begin. Forward. Yeah, we can have a way forward. Because you know, Chair, I, want, I know where, where you want to go. Yeah. Chair. 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 Yes, Honorable Bogakai? It's, it's me, Chair. Oh, so, okay. Okay, yeah. I know. Yeah. Chair, I, I, yes, I, I, I really want to understand uh, the problems we have with Mo University. Because it is something deeper. Because we have been Mo University for almost two months. And every time the Vice Chancellor and this team come here. <clears throat> he doesn't, he's not prepared. He doesn't have documents. I think it is good, Chair, yeah, to understand what challenges he's facing because he's also human. He could be facing challenges in his office. Does he have enough staff? Does he, <coughs> is he equipped? What is the problem? <laughs> I, I think let's, let's give the VC to take uh, the round of questions, then we come back to honorable members. But as uh, VC, you do that. Start by telling us, because you are charged by this committee, a fine not or a fine of five hundred thousand payable to the clerk of the National Assembly. Have you done that? I don't know if I can stand. No. <laughs> uh, I was coming with a heavy heart to plead for the button. Yeah, for limits. For yeah, the Yeah, an appeal here. Yeah, you should submit the to the chair. Honorable <laughs> Tongay, you want to usurp the powers of the chair? 
Why did you have to wait to come and appeal today? And the uh, Vice Chancellor, do you know that this is not the first time we are doing this? I understand, Chair. Yeah. And I really want to put it this way because when we were going through with the auditor on the questions that we were asked, uh, he was guiding us a lot on what documentation we need. So um, I would want to uh, confirm with the auditor what we went through. In, in fact, we sat the whole, almost the whole day yesterday and he's been sitting with my people as well. So I want to really say it was not an oversight, uh, honorable members. We focused on the question of the loan facility. And the other clarifications were to be made by my, my senior. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Mwenje, because we want to move. Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm hoping you'll tell us what's on the letter. But, um, Chair, we were just, yeah, actually, let me introduce myself. My name is Mark Mwenje, I'm PM Bakas West, and I'm a member of this committee. And, uh, Chair, you know, we've been having quite a number of issues with, uh, with Moy University. And actually, we are just conversing here with my colleague. Chair, we probably need a forensic audit. And you know, this committee has not even visited this university. Considering the matters we had with land, now this issue of river tax is just... They, I mean, I, I, can't, I don't want to be labor, but you can see what our colleagues are saying. So, Chair, I think in your, as you consider your next steps, I think we need a thorough audit, on, not just on this issue, but the entire institution as a whole, so that we can... Uh, we can understand the depth of the problems that exist within this uh, university. Chair, you know, Moi University is one of the universities that, and even for us lawyers, they, they, for a long time, some of the best advocates and all that, they come from this university. But the issues that we've been facing <coughs> might damage this entire university if we don't take some stern actions uh, going forward. Thank you, Chair. Something, eh? Very important, eh? Yes, uh, Mushmo Thank you. <coughs> For the record, I'm from Meruka. I don't want to ask a lot of questions, but I want us because we, to avoid forth and back in the sense that the auditor has confirmed he has received document this morning. Can he be able to verify are there all documents that again will come again? Have another scenario whereby he doesn't have documents as he requested. That's my concern anyway. Chairman, Chairman, allow me to say this. I will go the route of uh, Honorable Mwenje because we've had more university here, as he has said, for two months. And it seems there is a problem which we can't really pinpoint. I would also suggest that we have a forensic audit because the auditors will sit with the... I don't know whether sometimes whether it's articulation that's also a problem or what is the problem. The auditors will then come and tell us exactly where the picture of the institution and where it stands and then we are able to interrogate because really this is just we've had a back and forth for way too long with more university yeah thank you honorable members before we conclude on this matter you took money from the university pension scheme a loan of 50 million could that be the reason why pensioners are crying No, Chair. Pensioners are not, they are not crying because of 50 million. There could be other things, but uh, I do know that uh, that 50 million that we took from there uh, was actually to be paid back to them. And I believe we, I don't have the records now, but. Uh, what is the status? Chair, I've been away for 17 years now from the institution. So it will let off the, yeah. uh, the current VC. What is the status of the 50 million? Honorable uh, Chair, I have to confirm that because uh, this is new information. I'm, uh, what do you mean new information? Yeah, I mean a new question. But okay, is the loan, have you cleared the loan or not? I'll have to find out, Chair. 
It's not finance officer here. Let, let me explain uh, what happens with Rivertex uh, on Gochia. No, the pension has money. We are talking about pension has money. It's not your money. I, I know. It's pension, it's pension has money. Somebody who has worked in your institution for quite a period, he has retired, he's entitled to his benefit, and today you are giving us stories that let's go through for it and to see how it is. Has that rule been refunded? Has that money been refunded to the account so that the owner of the money can get his money as a retired person? That's what and chair, and chair, that's and chair, let me also ask a question so that you can answer. What is the current status of the pension fund? Because from the inside, I know that the pension fund is in trouble. Uh, the current status... No, 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 just, we are a house of rules. You just don't talk. Yeah. Honorable Zambia. It's okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, for record purpose, I'm Engineer Zambia, Member of Parliament, Economic Constituency, and a member of this committee. Chair, I just want to know uh, from the VC whether the, the, the pensioners are affected. Are they getting their monthly dues as part today? On, on the board members, I find the, the VC not honest. This information is coming from the minister. Why would the minister have information that the VC doesn't, that the VC does not have? When have you seen? Uh, I want to explain it this way, Chair. Can you allow us five minutes uh, break? No. Kindly. <laughs> Because what happens with Rivertex is being run independently of the... We are asking about the loan of 50 million from the pension scheme. What is the status? Was it cleared? Has it not? I need to confirm, Chair. By the way, VC, we will sort that institution. Let me tell you. We are going to sort out Moi. Whether you like it or not, we are going to sort out Moi. Yeah, it is, it is not in a good position. So, what you need five minutes to confirm. You have your officers here. Which officer? The finance officer should be there. I mean, 50 million is not five shillings. That's a lot of money. Public money and it's people's money. Was it paid or not paid? Yes, I want to confirm it was refunded. It was paid. Um, no, 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 just a minute. Can we have documentation? Yes. Yes, we can provide the documentation. Honorable members, don't you find it weird that the VC does not know of such a serious issue in the institution, yet the finance officer knows? Chair. Chair. Yes, Honorable it, Officer. It is not the first time we've been going through these circuits. And I'm happy that the PS <coughs> and the CS are here. Yeah. This is what we go through in this particular institution. From lack of geographical balance to incompetency to leasing land before all other processes. And this is what we go through. You, we, need, we, we really need to fix this uh, uh, waziri. And that's why I was talking about packing my question on the issue of contracts, performance contracts. And in fact, I'm surprised that Professor Hiro is here, who I know never landed when he was taken to Eldoret. So I don't know why he's here, but anyway, I, I leave it to the chair. Chair, 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 chair. I still, I still want to know the status of the pension fund currently. Chair, I need to know the status of the pension fund as at now. Yes, but I'm afraid these answers are not getting questions. That's why I want us to make progress. Mwalimu teacher. Thank you, Chair. I just want to know from the auditor whether the VC is making progress as far as submitting of documents is concerned. Mm -hmm. the Honorable auditor. member, the, the VC has provided documents today morning. We do not know whether there are sufficient documents or not. And the VC has had two weeks. So I'm afraid these questions will not come to an end. And uh, Public Audit Act uh, 
chapter 37 under forensic audit. The Auditor General may, upon request by Parliament, conduct forensic audits to establish fraud, corruption, or other financial improprieties. Consequently, Honorable Members, this committee directs that the Auditor General does a forensic audit on Moy University around issues of, uh, of uh, river tax, with between river tax and the university, Itonge, and, then more than that, and the pension, pension, because uh, 50 million was involved, right? And also the gate chairman, there is more. <laughs> there is more. No, no, no. We, we, we go step by step. Yes. So on this one, we are ordering a forensic audit on all the issues related to river tax. Registration, yes. uh, the, 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 the 200 million, the 50, the funding, everything about river tax. That's one the assets, yes. yeah. so, chairman, I that, uh, liabilities. I thought that since we could not be telling the Auditor General to be having that uh, forensic experts, uh, Audit for each and every item. Please speak on the mic. We give the uh, we give the items which you would wish that they be looked upon. Through say you as see, per which I may finish chairman if you are around me. Yes, yes, sir. So that uh, we can come out clear so that we're not in, be going back again to more university. We give even some years which you want forensic uh, uh, forensic evidence to be audit to be done. Taking into account that one is river tax, which we can, uh, there's a lot of sense of incompetence and corruption and so on. Then we go back a little bit to other perturbing questions, because they are there. On, on the remember, we pronounce ourselves on this issue, then we proceed to the next question. Yes, and before we proceed, just, yeah. just, just, a, just a minute. On this issue, we've ordered a forensic audit. So there are still other issues related to MOI which we are going to go through. So if we find any other issue that requires the same attention, the committee will add. Uh, but, but Chair, before we proceed, they said the MD is here. Is the MD of Rivertex here? Where is he? Huh? Are you the one? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Chair, Chair. M MD maybe to give us a brief. Chair, I, I wanted to ask, what does forensic audit mean? Uh, Auditor General, what does it mean? Itonge. Any of you can... A forensic, Mr. Chairman, thank you. A forensic audit entails uh, the auditing to do with uh, fraud and the crime in particular, and so it has a lot of uh, legal connotations because uh, we need to work in accordance with the rules of the country, which covers fraud and the criminality. So that's it. Yes, no, we'll come to the timelines, don't worry. Yes, uh, Honorable, it's here no one. Done with the, the matter, and there's something else that concerns the public and all of us here about the strike that happened at Moy University. I'm beginning to think that the problem could be actually the incompetency that is being displayed here in front of us. So I want to ask the CS, what are they doing about the fact that our learners or our students, university students are out there and here we are grappling with an incompetence uh, level that is unimaginable. How are we able to tell the public that this university will go back to its operation in a proper way? Okay, Honorable Member, I wanted us to finish with the, the forensic audit. It only one month. This is a very serious matter. Two weeks. Chair, I report. Just one item. Chair, what do you think? One month would be short. It will be short. So two months? Yes. 60 days. Okay. 60 days? 
Yeah, and and uh, no stone should be left unturned. Okay. Maybe chairman, before we fix the time for him, was the required time for them to do forensic coding? No, they've said two months. Are you, Are you okay? okay? Yeah. Yes, as long as the National Assembly does the requisite request to, to the AG. Today, clerk, today. So, VC, we've received your letter, and the committee is going to respond to it. We will communicate to you. Honorable Mumina has raised, an, has raised an issue, I think, of national concern. What is the status of more University? I saw you are chairman here. And don't remember, there's a petition here concerning the plight of more university workers. Thank you, chairman and honorable members. I think I'd like to focus. My name is honorable Dr. Dr. Humphrey Kimani Yugona, chairman of the council and a former member of parliament, 11th parliament. I'm privileged to be here. And I've been there since in my university from 2021 to today as the chair of the council. And the issues that the honorable members are raising are weighted. And I'd like to set some light as I know it. That regarding the pension. We never used to have problems in pension limitants and statutory limitants until Mr. 2015. Chairman, don't bother yourself with yeah. the, what is the status of the university. Students are on strike. Yes. Oh, I have a petition here. Workers are on strike. Mm -hmm. Did you close the university? Why? For how long? Yes. For what? Yes. And this is what I want to explain, Honorable Chair, that the issue on the closure of the university first of all was a national issue financial inadequate financial capitation in all public universities ours not an exception we have unlimited pension to the tune of four billion they were have an issue with the way we pay salaries, whether diagonal or horizontal as per CBA. Those were the issues. And even as we are talking, we have not been able to pay the salaries. Because we have received the capitation 89 million against the gross salary per month of 403 million. We have raised this issue with our own ministry, the CS, the Treasury, and so on. And I believe it is being addressed because these are workers' rights, as you put it. But when you receive inadequate capitation at 89 million, you're talking about 23% 20, of the salaries of the across board. So we have an issue. And this is what I was trying to explain, because this can be traced back to 2015, when but the parallel program collapsed. We are getting about $4 billion in the parallel program. Don't forget that this more university, in the past, we assisted nurture and develop of 10 public universities. So in the course of doing that, we carried a very large workforce, which to date is still there. And this is one of the issues, the reason why perhaps you are not able to pay the gold salary against whatever you are getting from the government. And it's an issue, when you talk about the bloated workforce, it's an issue that we are addressing, it is an issue that we must involve all the stakeholders, it's an issue that we are addressing, as we are talking, we have harmonization, we have PKF, HR, HR farm, that's addressing that issue so that this matter can be addressed once and for all. Now, when the national strike was called off, 
our labor force, the staff, and 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 and, and the director has said, we want arrears paid now, we want pension paid now, we want everything sorted out now. This is a discussion, and because of the of the rising tension and the interest of uh, of uh, taking care of the assets and even the students, the Senate released a decision on Friday, last Friday, to close the university. But there is consultation going on with the ministry, consultation going on with the treasury, so that once funds are availed, then you'll be able to engage, because you are still engaging with the unions. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I have a question yeah. to the chairman. No, I want us to structure it this way. Yes. We have a petition. I just want uh, Honorable Mwenje, please read for us the seven grounds and uh, read for us the five prayers from the petitioners. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just go direct to the grounds. Uh, now, uh, that the members of staff of Moy University are on strike on 26th uh, August 2024 over the following issues. Lack of promotion and an unfair promotion criteria. Poor governance within the institution where there is abuse of power, personal vendetta, witch hunt, and exclusion of staff from decision making on issues affecting them. Three, non implementation of collective bargaining agreements since 2013. Almost all university CBAs uh, local are in, the, are in the 2017 to 2021 cycle and are negotiating for 2021 to 2025. Failure, number four, failure to remit third party reductions such as bank loans, insurance, SACO, welfares, and benevolent contributions for the last five years. Staff have, as a result, been adversely affected by being taken to court, judgment entered against them, and auction of their properties. Staff are also adversely affected by listings in CRP and are unable to get clearance for Schedule 6. Uh, Kenya Constitution uh, documents. Number five, lack of group life cover for employees for over seven years now. The families of those who pass on in service are heavily disadvantaged and resort to fundraisers. Six, withholding of employees' contributions to their unions as a way of paralyzing the unions so that the workers are unrepresented, approximately 45 million outstanding. And finally, seven non remittance of pension contribution for the last seven years, leading uh, accumulation of more than 4.2 billion to date, meaning workers have no pension on retirement. The prayers are essential, more university for violation of the rights of its workers. Two, bring to the attention of relevant government departments the issues raised by the petitioners. Three, Support the workers of Moi University fight against the injustices against them. Four, seek for lasting solutions to the issues by bringing on board stakeholders to discuss and resolve the issues. And finally, five, employ any other relief as may be seen possible to assist the employees at the institution. Thank you, Chair. See yes. there is a problem. The problem is uh, very big. It's a huge, humongous problem. It's affecting a number of universities, but uh, Moi University, I think, took and Taita Taveta faced the bulk of these problems. And we are trying to unravel what can be done because, as you read, uh, that petition, it encompasses a number of issues that need to be dealt with. But coming to the strike, that happened. There was a national strike, but there were also chapter strikes that were taking place. We managed to negotiate a, a, a back to work formula with the national uh, WASU and uh, KUSA and the uh, there, and they signed and went back on the 26th of September 2024. But the Moi chapter had a, a more serious problem because for some time they've not been receiving uh, their salaries. Uh, the pension is not being deducted. Some of them are indicating that uh, they are being taken to court and judgments are being given against them. So it's a very serious and deep problem. And as you are talking, I just kept quiet because I was wondering if I said this, how it would be taken, because I think the forensic audit 
should not be limited to the issue that we are facing here today. It should be a comprehensive forensic audit that is aimed at finding out what has happened and what can we do as a country to bring more university out of uh, the doldrums that it is in. Because what we've been doing for the last 10, 15, 20 years is just putting a bandage on the problem. As we speak here today, Moi University has a pending bills certified at 8.2 billion. That is a huge, a huge amount. So we need to look at the whole scenario and find out how do we help this university. There is a bloated workforce. There are so many issues that need to be looked at and people must agree that for us to ensure that Moi University survives, we make the hard decisions now. Because when pension is not there, what is somebody working for? When you've deducted or you've not paid me and a loan I took from the bank based on my salary, I'm being attached. Where is the motivation? So that is what um, has uh, brought us here. And I'm glad that this committee has called all of us here. I was wondering where I was coming to a PIC meeting, committee meeting since Moi University is independent, it has a committee, it has a council and all that. But now I have understood that it was important for me to be here because I have actually now understood that when we are all here together, we should be able to get a solution. Treasury is here, um, that um, Ministry of uh, Industry is, is here, the Ministry of Education is here, the MD from uh, that River Tex is here, the three VCs who have been previously there are all here. And you, members of parliament, are here who are actually with the people and with the students who come to you every other day. So it is important for us to agree that there is a problem. And then how do we deal with this problem? But as we deal with the forensic audit, which is going to take some time, we need to get a stopgap measure solution so that the students can go back to class. So that is what we need help on so that we can raise the funds that they require right now to be able to start operating. They, they've indicated here that they've not paid salaries. The salary is 403 million per month. Whether that is sustainable or not is another question, but we need to deal with it so that the students can go back to class as we solve uh, these problems. These are the issues that we are dealing with as a ministry together with the treasury to see whether we can get these resources for them to go back. members, I wonder just to take 30 minutes only, then we have a way forward on this issue. Buana Sears, as we converse over these issues, ultimately we will want a way forward from you as, as a minister in charge here, so that we want students in school yesterday, and we want workers in, uh, at, at the university yesterday. So I will give a few members just to ventilate over the issue. But then, as we discuss this issue when uh, CS, where did the rain start beating us? Okay? Does it point?